so tired because I worked yesterday yesterday I worked at 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. and I scheduled to shadow today from like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. like that's the shifts but you know it doesn't have to always be you know from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. you know um, I've been shadowing for a while now like um, three to four times prior so you know it's summertime I'm still want to build my shadowing hours up and um, you know just get those experiences and keep building that relationship with who I'm shadowing so that, you know, I can gain a better understanding and see, you know, more aspects of the day-to-day -day life, well, you know, for anesthesi anesthesiology. Because tomorrow, me and my friends are going rafting and I'm cooking after, so that's going to be that. But right now, it's 625. I'm a little bit drowsy, so I'm just going to go stop by Dunkin' Donuts and get me a coffee and then head to um, go shadow. <laughs> you know i love going to duncan y'all it's never a line like every time i come to duncan it's not no line and i can get my coffee like straight up now it's going on 6 34 i have my shadowing at seven we're still good on time If you're watching this video, then hopefully you watched my previous video when I told y'all I got a new camera, right? So, boom. Y'all, I recorded a whole talk and, you know, overview of my shadowing experience later that night. But, you know, like the dummy I am. Not dummy, but, you know, just being sarcastic, y'all. I recorded it in slow motion. So, everything that I said is, like, in slow motion and there's no way to, like, get the regular audio back. So, I'm just going to, you know, answer a few questions that's most frequently asked. And also, just, you know, I'm just responding to some things I saw on my own. Um 
comments on my day in life video the most frequently question i get is how did i get the opportunity to shadow so this is just giving you all my personal experience if you know you know i graduated in 2020 during covid so my opportunity to shadow was pretty limited and there were no anesthesiologists let alone doctors in my family so i didn't i didn't have any familial connections to connect me with it and then also the route that it took and just everything that it took, this is just me telling, you know, my background on how I got my shadow was just me showing y'all and telling y'all to remain persistent. Keep knocking. Don't be afraid of no's because, you know, if you want something, you're going to work hard to get it right. So I knew I wanted shadow and experience. And yes, you know, you can't, you know, apply without having shadow and experience if you got clinical experience. But this was just something I wanted to have. So before I even started working at the hospital, I do have my mom who's in the medical field. So, you know, I attempted to get in with shadowing at her job. And, you know, I filled out the paperwork, submitted my documents, my immunization workers and all of that. And that just kind of fell through. I was even calling the department and it just always was falling through when I called the number and, you know, was trying to get the process moving. It just, it did not work. So that did not work. Um, I tried cold emailing, you know, a few anesthesiologists, a few doctors. I didn't, I never heard back. And then uh, um, also I know for one of my National Society of Black Women in Medicine events, we did these thank you notes to doctors on National Doctor Day. I even included my student email to also, you know, maybe hear back. I don't even know if those doctors even got the thank you cards, but we dropped them off. So we had the we had the kindness of my heart. You know, we had the right idea. So if they did or did not, you know, oh well. On to the next thing that I did. So I started asking um um people that when I would go to medical events, you know, do you know any anesthesiologists or do you know this? And you know, even at one of the more household of medicine events that I went to, I came across an anesthesiologist. However, this is the kicker, he um actually was not based in Georgia or Atlanta. He was like he's in Fort Lauderdale and that I could, you know, fly out and shadow him if I wanted to. And that was just kind of a lot. You know, if that was my last resort, I would have, you know, did it like a weekend shadowing. But I was like, I stayed connected with him and I just proceeded to, after that, um, look for other anesthesiologists locally. And he didn't necessarily, um, couldn't connect me with anyone locally either, because as I stated, he was out of state. So from there, you know, with me being involved in multiple extracurricular organizations, um, with me being a part of the PPHS at Clark Atlanta, which is the pre the pre-professional honor society, we receive monthly um, you know events with YPI Young Physicians Initiative, which are medical school students at Morehouse School of Medicine who would come over once a month and do case studies with us and you know talk to us about their journeys and everything of that nature. So from there, you know, I was just like, you know, this is my last resort. I'm gonna just ask the students how did they get their shadow experience, and so I asked them. I was like, hey, do you know anybody who wants to be going to anesthesia? and she wasn't she wasn't there but one of the students gave me her phone number and no they gave me her email and then I emailed her and then she gave me her phone number and then we started texting and then she was like she's the president of the anesthesiology club at Morehouse School of Medicine and she um connected me with one of her mentors who had a shadowing program open that I could join although it was for medical school students that you know he would allow me to you know come in and shadow as well from there, you know, I signed up to start shadowing, and that's just how I got my shadowing experience, y'all. And before I resulted to that, um, as you know, if you've been watching my YouTube, I'm a medical scribe. I've been a medical scribe in the emergency department for over a year now. And, y'all, I even tried to get in at my job, y'all. When I tell you I was so adamant and wanting an experience, y'all, I tried with asking the doctors I worked with. And, you know, as I said, I worked in the emergency department. So, you know, they don't know any anesthesiologists because they never come down. The anesthesiologists never come down. If anything, you would see the cardiologists, the pulmonologists, the OBGYNs, the internal medicine doctors, and even sometimes surgeons they'll come down but anesthesiologists people will tell you they're hard to track down you you will not see them if you don't need to you know they're not you know a part of your you know next steps as far as consultations and things regarding the patient so you know I even went to the surgery side y'all I walked to this I walked to the surgery side of the hospital I went to the front desk I was like hi can I get you know some of the anesthesiologists you know cards email anything like that they was like no you can't come to the desk and get their information they told me to try HR y'all I walked down to the HR department I tried that too and you know she was kind of confused she took my information down it was like you know I'll see you see if I can reach out and get some contact information for you 
y'all. I never heard back. And I quite frankly never followed up because I just knew that was going to fall through. So I just left that alone. And so me reaching out to the medical school student was like my last resort. And y'all, it finally, it finally worked out. So this is just my story of me telling y'all what I went through because I really wanted to shadow somebody. I really wanted to see the day-to-day -day life, the surgery side, the outpatient side, well, not outpatient, but the post-anesthesia side of talking with the patients and the family. Also, the pre-anesthesia side of getting their, you know, history, their allergies, their consent forms, and things of that nature. So this is just your side to keep going. If you have not obtained a shadowing experience yet, then keep going. Use all your resources, network, and just always ask. Keep asking. A no does not mean denied it just means delayed and it just wasn't meant to be for that time so yeah y'all let's get back to this video okay so y'all it is june 18th and we're fixed to head to go rafting we're going in columbus and y'all let me tell you what i did i brought the camera and the battery but i left the sd card at home so i have to vlog on my phone I was going to do that anyway. I was trying, I was at the store trying to look for like a little GoPro, a little camera there for it in case it get wet. But only black people, bruh. Only black people. <laughs> only black people. Uh, it's a thousand Bay Ave, Columbus. How do you remember that? Because right. I was just looking early. <laughs> like earlier, like, wait, it was a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to get there at 311. So we're fixing to head out. Throw some gas in this thing. We can stop and get gas when we get out of the city. It's locked. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to sit down. Y'all, yeah, I didn't eat, so I'm gonna try to make some noodles. With your permission 